We're excited to be interviewing Jackie Perez today, in-game host for the Toronto Argonauts and Rogers TV personality. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a beautiful place. Thanks thank, for having thank us you. here. <laughs> so what an exciting year for the Toronto Argonauts and the CFL. Tell me what it's been like for you so far with uh, moving to the BMO field, to the new stadium. Yeah. And also I did see earlier this year, the CFL went through a rebranding with their graphics and just the new look for fans. So tell me all about that. Yeah, so first I'll talk, touch briefly about the CFL. Um, the whole look is um, really showing that grit and that power um, with what CFL is, it's called What We're Made Of is the campaign. Um, and it's showing a really cool side to um, the CFL that we've never really seen before. Um, I'm just super excited because um, I've been with the Toronto Argos for six years. My first uh, five years have been as an Argos cheerleader. Um, and we played at the Rogers Centre, um, and so that's all I knew. So to hear that we were going to BMO Field was so exciting because it's an outdoor stadium, so rain, shine, if it's snowing, we're, we're going to be outdoors. Um, and it was super exciting as well because I took on a new role, and that was as in-game uh, host. And um, it's been amazing so far. Um, we've, we're in the halfway through the season. Can't believe it. <laughs> I know it's it's gone so so far, and um, just the talk of new beginnings, um, new field. Um, we're really capturing fans, um, young, old, um, and we really want to capture that with um, this new aspect that we have. It's called tailgating. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Oh yeah. Um, and it's something that Ontario hasn't seen mm -hmm. um, in the city or even in Toronto. Um, the tailgate aspect is one of the highlights for Argos games, so um, about an hour and a half to two hours before each game, um, we have a place called the Shipyard, and fans can come and check out um, if there's musical acts, if there's DJs, there's barbecue, there's uh, beer that's for $4, there's That games. sounds like a good deal. <laughs> right? Because beer is so expensive um, in stadiums, but here at Tailgate, it's, it's 4 bucks. Um, and then the tailgate aspect, if you do get a parking pass or if you are a season ticket holder, um, you can pull up your car and you can um, bring out your barbecue grill and just have a good time. And there's, um, you know, those Dickie D trucks that are yeah. bicycles that had the ice cream in it growing up as a kid. They've actually um, had these Dickie D uh, trucks or bicycles and they have beer coming out of it too. And that's also $4. That sounds good. Beer, food, and then the Toronto Argonauts, you know, you can't yeah. do any better than that. And that's all pre-game stuff, right? And then the game itself, um, the atmosphere has been so electric. Um, just the intimacy of it, you could hear everyone uh, chanting, you could hear the noise, you could you could get so close to the players um, that it's such a different vibe, such a different vibe. Now that's a great experience for fans. I mean, as we know, they just want to get in there. They want to be able to, you know, they can't obviously touch the players, but get as close as they can get to them. You uh, talked about uh, being a cheerleader for about five years. Mm -hmm. What's the difference in terms of fan engagement uh, as a cheerleader and then now as the in-game host? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's, it's different um, because as an Argos cheerleader, you know, um, before, the pre before the games, we'd be out going to the fans um, pre-game pre or even we'd be in the stands and talking to them um, and, you know, taking the picture, like doing little cheers with them. Um, so that's one of my favorite things about game days is that fan interaction. Um, I find that as game day host, the fan interaction is just on another level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're on the Jumbotron, you're interacting with the person who's um, competing for a contest or a prize giveaway, um, and you're running around the stadium um, in a different way. So um, it's funny when people yell, they're like, Jackie, my automatic instinct is to put my hand on my hip and just start yeah. shaking my pom-pom, <laughs> and I, was, I, I don't like have, I don't have anything one. in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, right, not anymore, no yeah. more handshaking. So um, it's just getting out of that habit. But um, fans have been so great and so supportive. Um, and it's nice to see the regulars come back and to see those season ticket holders who have been uh, fans of the Argos for years. And you've had different roles with the Argos as well with uh, social media. Mm -hmm. um, talk about, uh, you know, opportunities and talk about also making things happen. Because I know I, I read a couple articles uh, that, you know, you were interviewed. In, and you were talking about opportunities and just going after what you want. And can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, you know, like when I joined the uh, Argos cheerleaders, um, I knew just a little bit about the CFL. Um, and by my second, third year, I understood the game much more and 
you know, when you're invested in a team, you do follow it so much more. And then you follow CFL as a whole. And coming to Grey Cup festivals, um, it's given me a chance to be in Vancouver, in Winnipeg. Um, you know, like this year, it, the Grey Cup Festival is here in Toronto, and we had it in 2012 for the 100th Grey Cup. Mm -hmm. um, those are just opportunities to realize how great the Canadian game is. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I really benefit through that. Another aspect of um, being part of the Argos Cheerleaders, it really, um, I'm such a different person uh, from when I joined. It really instilled a lot of confidence in myself, um, self-esteem. Um, as well as friendships that I never imagined I would have. Um, and that's because it was with these girls on the team that I had this shared experience with like-minded personalities. Every single one of the girls who are on the team are go-getters. Mm -hmm. They know what they want, they're hardworking. Um, those are elements that it takes to be a dancer or part of, you know, like uh, part of an organization, part of a, a job, because, you know, you, you are going to practices, um, twice a week, you're working for three hours, um, then you got to also juggle your full-time job or if you have school, um, then you got to juggle game days. And when you're at a game at, for eight hours, nine hours, even though the game itself is three hours, yeah. that preparation prep around time. it, there, there's so much involved and it's maintaining that energy, that positivity and that enthusiasm. Um, so you really, you really develop a lot of skills. Um, and back to your question about how has that helped me with what I want, it really helped me identify what it is I want to do. I went to school for communications mm -hmm. and um, the idea of when we started um, going to media interviews um, and even like being out there in the public eye and just really representing a brand or the organization, it, you know, it, it really means something to me um, and to, that's really close to my heart. And when we started doing these things, I was like, you know what? Like, this is something that's really exciting. It's something that um, maybe I really want to pursue because um, I was really used to being comfortable behind the camera and pro and producing. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'll just create it. I have the ideas, mm -hmm. and we're gonna cut it this way. And the idea of being in front of it, I was like, oh, that's for other people, and you know, I was like, <laughs> now whatever. Look where you are. <laughs> yeah, you know. And I was like, you know what? I actually have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the the fact that I've been able to do all aspects of it. So um, I started off as social media for Argos Chair, and it was so fun um, because it let me understand not just the Argos cheerleaders, but also the Argos brand, um, and also the fans. I was gonna say interacting and engaging with them. So much interaction, and uh, you know, fans are fans are amazing. Yeah. Um, and then from there, um, I was like, you know what, we sh there's a really cool um, aspect I think that we can do. Not many people know about the Argos cheerleaders behind the scenes. Like they see us like on the field, yeah. but like what really goes behind the palms, goes right? beyond the palms. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> exactly, the beyond the palms. Oh, yeah. um, so that was an opportunity to really showcase us in a different light. Yeah. And that's where I was like, you know what, I'm having a lot of fun with this because, you know, I was like, I know how to edit, I know how to do this. And when we started doing those things, I was like, you know what, this is awesome. Let's see what else we can do. And that really started my journey with um, doing stuff with Rogers TV mm -hmm. um, as a host for Insaga. I was going to get there. Yeah. Because I read a, a Facebook post that said, like, Jackie, like, you know, you're, you're everywhere. <gasps> like, where, where else can we find you? And it was really funny because it just showed me that, you know, you, you speak a lot about, uh, you know, seeking opportunities and, and being in the right place at the right time. And uh, can you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, working for Rogers TV? Absolutely. Um, you know, Rogers is something, like, I grew up in Mississauga. Um, and Rogers has always been around. Um, it's been giving people a chance to really explore what they want to do. Um, just it was it was just by random chance. Um, there was a, a, a friend of mine who um, I I guess we just became Facebook friends. I really and my, he's my co-host now, and we always forget like how did we meet? Yeah. And it was just years and years ago. And I remember seeing on Facebook that he started this uh, website called Insaga.com, and I was like, oh, that's really cool, good for him. Um, and then a, a year later or two. Um, he started a podcast and I was like, cool, he's doing really well with it. And then all of a sudden it's a TV show. And uh, I noticed, I'm like, you know what? I'm like, I'd love to be a part of this. Yeah. Just let me know how I can be. Um, and I just had so much fun with it. And he asked me to be a co-host and I was like, sure, let's do it. And uh, two and a half years later, um, we're still having fun. We're, st uh, we're having so much fun at Celebration Square every Thursday um, with amazing guests. And it really showcases what Mississauga is, and I think it's something that uh, the city really needed because me growing up, <clears throat> there wasn't really a place to see where the mom and pop shops are. You know, you you see the typical 
chain places to go in terms of restaurants, clothing. Um, and you didn't know who, which people were coming out of it. Um, my co-host and I like to always joke with artists or musical acts when they come in, we're like, you know, well, you know, when you get bigger or when you are bigger the way you are, I love that you represent Mississauga and that it's not just, I represent Toronto. Um, they're like, no, of course we're going to represent Mississauga because there's so much talent um, and there's so many ways to cultivate that talent in the and next local, generation. local businesses. Definitely, yeah. definitely.